what's up y'all i'm lady and i'm back with another book talk in today's video we will be discussing the last summer on state street by toya wolf i'm currently in my car at the library about to drop this one off i picked this one up um, a few weeks ago while when I had time to scroll through the aisles in the library and this was in the new fiction section the colorful um, cover <laughs> got my attention for sure and then when I read what the story was about I just knew that this was something that I would want to read. So I read this book over the course of six days. I only had the physical book because my library did not have um, the audio book. I don't know if they own it or not or if it just wasn't available, but I enjoyed this one just only by using the physical copy. And I rated this book five stars y'all this is a complete book that's covered that's done in just over 200 pages um there were a few things about the writing that i did not like that may would um push it down from five stars to a four but because of just the emotions and the nostalgia that i felt when reading this book it is completely five stars for me. Um, one of the things I'll say about the writing style, I feel it's just a quirk that I have. And it happens a lot in books um, where when you're introduced to a character and the author then says, yeah, in 20 years from now, he'll end up blah, blah, blah and wonder, you know, something like that. Like, foreshadowing sometimes that takes me out of the flow of reading of that you know that current story that's taking place because i start then thinking about that character's future but i feel like that's just a quirk that you know i have that's just something that sometimes bothers me but overall this book was excellent i did notice that um on goodreads that toya wolf is being compared to jacqueline woodson and Britt bennett and usually i'm i'm side eyeing those you know publishers comparisons right but I totally agree with the comparisons after reading this book. Um, the type of story that she told, I could easily see um, Jacqueline Woodson writing a story like this or Britt Bennett um, writing a story like this. So let me read just a little bit of the um, flap of the book. It says, Felicia Fifi Stevens is living with her vigilantly loving mother and older teenage brother whom she adores in building 4950 of Chicago's Robert Taylor Homes. It's the summer of 99 and her high rise is next in line to be torn down by the Chicago Housing Authority. She along with the devout Precious Brown and Stacious Buchanan, who's a daughter of a gangster disciples queen pen from a form a tentative trio. And for a brief moment, carve out for themselves a simple life of double dutch and innocence. But when Fifi welcomes a mysterious new friend, Tanya, into their fold, the dynamics shift, upending the lives of all four girls. So, from the first 10 pages, I found myself thinking about my little um, friend group that I had when I was around this age. And many of them I'm no longer in contact with. And that's the nostalgia part that this book brought about. You know, just had me thinking about where are you know the those girls um this neighborhood or this housing um housing projects whatever you want to call it um i feel that toya wolf brought it to life i'm always a fan of fiction novels that describes real life 
so completely and that's what i feel she did with this one like this story is not an easy story to read okay it's excellent writing um it's um i'm glad this story is being told um about these girls um and it really made me think about when I say real or, or rawness that comes with real life, if that makes any sense, I think about The Street by Ann Petrie. And so that is one of my favorite books, but also one of the hardest emotional books that I've ever, you know, read. Um, Robert Taylor Holmes is an actual public housing um was actual public housing i should say in chicago from 1962 until the last building was torn down in 2007 so i took some time to research this development and i found a lot of heartbreaking stories and there is a pbs documentary on youtube um, that follows a family who lived in the Robert Taylor homes in the 1980s and the conditions that the, um, these high rises were in, in the eighties, I can only imagine, you know, what they were like by the time 1999 came around. So it was just pretty much a lot of poverty. And like I mentioned, this book is just over 200 pages, but it covers so much. Child abuse, sexual abuse, racism, drugs, police brutality, gang and gun violence, and just the overall trauma that comes with growing up in this type of environment. It also touches on um, labeling kids as project kids. The main character, Fifi, she has an opportunity to go to an aunt's house and her aunt doesn't live in the Robert Taylor homes. And when she meets the neighborhood kids, she then gets labeled a project kid and it's mistreated. And then this book also talks about the struggles of people and their emotions. Um, and how emotions are seen as weak in this environment. And I'm, I'm very familiar, unfortunately, with that type of environment. And this story is mainly about these four girls, but Fifi's brother, Michi, his story just broke my heart. Um, Michi really reminded me on a personal level of a cousin that I had who was killed when he was 16 years old. And um, I was just three years under him. And I remember my cousin being the playful kid who, you know, played around. And then I also remember as he got older and was introduced to gangs and, you know, became part of a gang. And then not too long after we lost him to gun violence, right? And I'm not saying that's what happens to Michi. Some of their story is similar. Um, so I'm not spoiling anything there, but I, I just found myself thinking about my cousin when reading Michi's story, right? So that just was heartbreaking. Um, pretty much my heart just broke for everyone in this story because life was rough, but there was some bright spots you know, and even in all, you know, real life, you know, there's ups and downs. Um, Fifi had her friend Precious, who dad was um, a minister or a deacon in a church. And Fifi enjoyed going to church. She liked learning there. Um, you had Mama Pearl was the old wise lady who lived in the building, who acted as a... Um, like a grandmother figure for the children and you then had um a a really caring teacher as well that was there um after i finished this book i end up listening to an interview with toya wolf and that was on books are pop culture it's a youtube channel i'll make sure to link that 
interview below because it's a it's an hour and a half long and i watched it all i really enjoyed um the interview and that conversation um so i definitely recommend that finally um, overall y'all this is an excellent book i think it it, sh it won't take you long to read it yes it's a hard story um to read but overall i highly recommend it i know you will not regret reading this book so after i read last summer on state street i then read conjure women i read this one i'm about to take both of them back to the library so stay tuned to my next video where i will talk about conjure women that is it for me in this video i hope you all enjoyed it and i will see you in my next one bye y'all